It's a time for a massive package from China. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, it's time to check out this new version of the Pandora Portable. So we're going to deep dive into the Pandora jungle and let's see what we're going to get today. For the people who are not familiar to Pandora's Box in general, so Pandora's Box is basically like this all about machine that you can play some old school retro games. But the question remains, what are we going to get with this model? But what do I mean with this model? So this model basically is a portable version, but I've reviewed so many of them. It comes with all the necessary parts, ready to get up, ready and to go. It also comes with a power supply and an HDMI cable, because what I like about these portables, some of them, and I'm thinking this one too, is that we can basically hook it up to a television and basically use this thing like a game machine. So it has a 2 one function. It also includes the manual, which explains how it works. But let's get this thing out and let's show you how this device is. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to get. We're going to get the black box of Pandora. And I can say like this new model looks way better than the other one. The other one was more like squared shape. It was not very fancy. This one got some more nicer curves. But the first thing that we need to do is remove the freaking joystick. Otherwise we cannot freaking open it up. All right, so let's open it up. And I must say that the first impression is quite positive. So I really love the way this thing looks. It's quite huge compared with the 10H model we've reviewed in the past. But I do like this mini way this thing looks and again and let's get rid of this plastics and let's take a close look at the buttons and the controls. But mama mia, I forgot the freaking dust cap. Yuppie doo. Not really important, but I just wanted to have it on this freaking thing. Because that looks way better. I'm even going to get two of them, so that is nice. And the next thing that we need to do is basically like tighten up the ball top use the screw that comes with the kit hold it and tighten it up and that's it otherwise your balls go to get loose okay but let's take a close look at the bottom part and the reason why because we go to have a very cool future so what we're going to get is a battery compartment because yep we can make this thing fully portable and also comes with these very nice feet over here the rubberized feet to give a very stable position on the table Okay, so another thing is when you're going to order these special 18, 650 batteries, the problem is that you need to find the right one. Not only the brand, because when it comes to brand lists and brands, we have so many different versions out there. And not to forget, it also needs to fit. Sometimes these will not fit because you need a different version. Okay, so what we're going to use are these ones with the tip at the top, because these seem to be working just fine. And no, stay here. Let's put the batteries in and let's it go. Go in. Yes. It's very tight. But okay, so let's take a close look at the control panel itself. So the joystick, they're also using like these weird, I want to say like wiggle sticks. They are okay quality, but not like Sandwa or something like that. This one comes with a square gate as I can feel over here. The buttons, I want to say they are like the okay quality. I mean, but okay, long travel, they will do the job. But of course, it's personally, if you want to have like high quality, sometimes they will sell these portables with Sandwa parts. But first, let's remove all the freaking plastics. But above the buttons, what we're going to get is basically the start coin, pause, select, and the LS. The LS is something that we're not going to use in the Pandora box menu, but these are necessary, including coin if you want to play some arcade and MAME. And here on the left side, we're going to get ourselves the on off button for the monitor itself, auto, volume control, and here we're going to get the menu button. So I'm curious if we're going to get the option to change out the XS ratio with this one. Okay guys, so let's take a close look at the inside. And the main reason I just wanted to show you guys is because sometimes I need to troubleshoot before I can even make this freaking review. So there's something wrong with the device. And the thing is like my display doesn't boot up. So I basically didn't completely tear it down. So let's take a close look at the display itself. So the display you can see over here, they messed around a little bit with mounting brackets. So I did double check everything, but somehow the display doesn't go on. But when you're looking at the PCB here at the bottom, it does light up. And that's kind of weird. So that means that this thing does have some juice, but somehow it does boot, doesn't really boot up my display itself. So we're going to need like troubleshoot just to see if we can fix it. Besides like getting a voltage meter, here you can see like the LED is powering on. So that means that this thing is getting some juice. Also when I'm moving the joystick, you can hear that there is something going on. So everything is powered on, but somehow my display doesn't go on. So I think I'm going to get myself a voltage meter, try some things out to see if, it, if it's like any voltage problem or it's just a bad ribbon cable. So that's something that we're going to try out. 
in this teardown slash review. Okay, so after I say a minute or ten, like messing around with it, so got in my big friend the voltage meter. So what we did basically is like trying to discover how this system actually works. So what they are using, they're using this extra special PCB, this specially for the monitor itself, and as you can see, it seems to be working now. But before I'm gonna tell you what the problem is, let's take a close look at the everything, how it works, it's quite interesting. Okay, so here at the right side, we're gonna get ourselves a button, and this button is basically like for getting the audio through a different channel. Here we're going to see like the splitter that we're going to get over here. It's not really fancy, just a basic thing. So if you want to like adjust the audio, you can do it that way. So, but what they made with this is quite interesting. Here we're going to see the battery compartment. So here we're going to get the option to use the, of course, external batteries that we're using at this moment. So where we're going to get over here, the cable goes all the way there. So basically what they do, they divided the 12 volt power line and they gave it to the internal connector over here on the PCB. But then was the question like, okay, so everything was getting 12 volt. Everything works very well with the external power supply, but also with the battery compartment. What was the problem over here? So yeah, I needed to disassemble the freaking LCD panel. This thing is super thin. And what you're going to get here at the back is the connector. Everything was taped together like crazy. So yeah, there was also a moment of saying, this is quality control, my ass. So they tipped everything together. And I understand they want to do this because they want to keep the connection in here in the right position, but they didn't even insert it properly. And that is the main problem why my display didn't work. So when it comes to a fix like this, it's always very easy to find your solution. It's basically like, or an input display that doesn't have the right ribbon cable connected, or we're just going to get ourselves a 12 fold issue. But we fix it so we can finally put this thing back together and let's continue with the review. And let's remove this screen protector because we cannot really do this when this display has been assembled. And I know people are going to comment me that I need to remove the freaking screen protector. So it has been done. Before we go to assemble everything, I just want to take a close look again under the panel itself because there are some things that are quite concerning and things that you need to know when it comes for upgrading this device. So when it comes to portable devices, the main problem I'm always having with this is simply like the way how they assembled everything. So what you can see over here, they use the VGA connection that we're normally having from the output. They're using it for the internal, let's say, display. It's a big problem, like, no, not really. So it works just fine and image quality, it's okay. But the problem is, if you want to upgrade this mainboard, you can see like finding the same exactly newer mainboard with this connection, that's going to be a challenge because they don't sell them very often on AliExpress. So another thing that is quite interesting is they are using a different mainboard, maybe in the newer models or in the future, let's put it that way, you have a different revision mainboard. And what do I mean with this? Like here you can see the GB3000 the revision 1.4. And then a previous Pandora's box I've reviewed, you already seen like they're using completely different, like cooler, everything has been redesigned. So I wanna say this is an older model and you need to take consideration if you want to use Pandora. Sometimes you can even upgrade it with Pandora, sometimes you don't, depending on what kind of model you're having. This is by the way, the 8000 edition, but yeah, now we're having here the Wi-Fi cables basically wigging around for the naughty store. Uh, it's basically in an enclosure, completely made of metal. So I think it would not be like the best experience that we're going to get. Let's remove this CPU cooler and let's take a close look at the chip itself because I'm curious what are we going to get when it comes to the specifications. Because there we're going to get also quite a lot of difference. Okay, well, what are we going to get in the inside? An AM Logic S812B. And they are using this quad core CPU for a very long time now. But sometimes, depending what kind of revision you're having, you're going to get like different chips. But in the end, they are like low powered. Then we're going to get ourselves the RAM chips over there. Like, there's nothing really fancy going on. But yeah, what you're going to get with the specifications, it's all fun. It's a quad core. But how does it perform when it comes to the games? So let's slap this thing back together and let's put it back in. And let's have some gaming fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, let's take a close look at the menu for the people who have no idea like what this Pandora Game 3 is. So personally, I'm a big fan of this. And the reason is simply we're going to get the all list. Personally, I'll wait all list because everything has been slapped in here. But we're going to get the category. And this system has the capability to run a lot of stuff from 8-bit, 16-bit, PlayStation 1, PlayStation Portable, you name it. But also what we're going to do is, of course, testing it out how good it runs. Because most of the time, sometimes they will have the option for it, but it doesn't run that great. We're going to get the recent list and also having the option to search. So that's quite interesting in my opinion. Okay, so let's take a close look in the menu. And in the menu, when you're pressing the tiny button at the back, we're going to get here the option to check out the key settings. Because with this version, we do have the option to add ourselves a controller. And then we're having going like different new options. So there is some minor adjustments, but only image optimization have been set to scan line 
or you can set them to HD. That's it. There's no XPS ratio. Then we're having like the gay market I've talked to about in the previous videos. Like the gay market is a way basically to be naughty, but I just going to be honest, like I didn't like it before because I do have a lot of issues and see, I did literally see people like dropping comments saying that they cannot even get into the store, stuff like that. But the best way to go is in my opinion to slap on some Pomodori tool and you can just basically add yourself the games and you can mess around with the software for example xpress ratio and a lot of improvements let's see how it runs so out of the box but they have reached the point that these devices will run playstation just fine All right, so the first thing I'm noticing, like the speaker itself is quite off on this device. We need to put it at like 30%, otherwise it sounds really bad. Like there is no bass at all. And it's a little bit too high pitched. The gameplay itself is similar like with the previous boxes. Some games run just fine. For example, this game will run basically with some hiccups. Okay, next up, so N64 is always like a mixed performance story, and it's because they are using low power chips. But when you deep dive into the rabbit hole, you will find some games that run just fine on this. Whee! But it will have his hiccups here and there. Alright, I'm ready. Let's take a close look at Sega Dreamcast. We're going to get the same like weird thing going on. The brightness is not perfectly. You can see like when it go into the game it will go instantly like 25% darker. It's kind of a weird thing. But the overall performance for a low power chip is not bad at all. Here you can see like the moment and basically the brightness like flickering stuff going on. Weirdness. Alright guys, so when you're plugging in the device or the portable in a monitor, this time the monitor will go offline and you're going to get the HDMI signal on your television. So I'm reaching now uh, simply because in the previous models we do have the option to use both screens at the same time. But seems to be with this version we don't have this option anymore. Alright, so let's play in short gameplay and I must say like... I personally really love the controls of this joystick itself. It's not the best controls, of course, it's not Senwa or something like that. But it will just do the trick. But I think it's pretty damn cool future. You can just plug this thing in the television and just play your old school games this way. Take consideration if you're having a television, you can also change out the XPS ratio. So you can put it on the original XPS ratio if you want to. The downside is we cannot do that with the in-building screen of the portable device with our, with this version. At least, because with the previous version I did have the option sometimes to change that XPS ratio if you like that. Woo! So when it comes to this portable device, they did improve a couple of things. To begin with, the casing. I personally really love the casing, the way how it looks, design is. But I also want to implement it in this video, just the struggle I'm having sometimes with having reviews. That stuff didn't even work when it came in. But yeah, we could fix it this time. But I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And it will be great to see you in the next video. Wicked reporting out.